Hi, my name's Griffin and I'm a scan technician at Capture 3D. Have you ever wanted to visualize color on your Atos 3D mesh? Today, I'll be demonstrating the capabilities of the free GOM Inspect software by walking you through the steps on how to image map a 2D photo to your mesh. Maybe you're asking yourself, what is image mapping or how is adding color beneficial to me? Well, adding color to your mesh feature may be useful to you if you're involved within the design through manufacturing product cycle, including maintenance and overhaul. We do this by utilizing the function called image mapping, where we can take a photo, let's say from our phone, and import it into our software, where we can then map it to our 3D mesh. All right, now let's get started. Okay, we will now begin the demonstration portion of this video. First, you want to make sure that you have the required files to achieve color on your mesh. What you'll need is the free GOM Inspect software, photos of your part of interest, in my case I'll be using JPEG files, as well as a 3D data set of your part. Alright, now let's jump into the software. Alright, now that we're inside the GOM Inspect software, the first step will be adding our 3D mesh to this project. Simply drag and drop the files into the project and select new part. You will then be asked how we want to import the 3D mesh, such as what type of units we're using as well as what type of element is being imported. I'll use the default parameters and select OK. Now that we have the mesh in the software, we want to add the desired photos to the project as well. To do this, simply drag and drop the file of interest into the 3D workspace and select Other Image. We'll then be prompted to add a custom name as well as input our focal length for the photo being imported into the software. If unsure of what the focal length may be, simply go back to the original file, right click, click Properties, go to the Details tab, and then we can scroll down and under Camera we'll see the camera being used, the different settings as well as our 35mm focal length, which will be the number inputted into the GOM software. Once complete, click OK. Now if we take a look at the image mapping view inside the software, we will see that our image has no direction nor relation to the mesh. So this will be our next step. To achieve this, go to Operations, Mesh, Color Mesh from Images, Orient Other Image. You will then be prompted with the 2D image inside the dialog box as well as your 3D mesh in the background. From here, we need to select five points that are in common for both the mesh and the image. We also want to make sure that when we select these five points, that they're distinct enough so it's easily repeatable on both the 2D image and the 3D mesh. We also want to make sure that when selecting these five points, they're well spread throughout our part to get the best result. After selecting the fifth point, you will see the image snap into place and now has relation and direction to the mesh. Now that we've mapped our image to our mesh, we're ready to add color. We do this by simply going to Operations, Mesh, Color Mesh from Images, Camera Image Contents on the Mesh. We'll then have the option again to add a custom name, select the mesh that we wish to add color, as well as an option to lighten the camera image or blend the reference points in the case that you may have taken the photos with reference points on your part. We'll then be given a preview of our mesh and we'll select OK. We can now see that our mesh has color from the direction of the image. You'll notice that the areas the picture did not have line of sight will be left colorless. If we want to have full color coverage on the mesh, we will need to add photos from more than just one angle. So once again, we will import the desired photos into the project. Simply drag and drop into the software and select Other Image. From here, we will now do the same steps that we've done before, selecting the five common points, and we will do this for each image. Now that we've added our five additional photos, we can now see through our image mapping view that we have a good distribution of pictures surrounding our part. 
From here, we'll now control and click on each photo. And then once selected each of the photos, we can then go back into our operations, mesh, color mesh from images, and project the camera images onto our mesh. Once complete, we can click create and close, turn off our image mapping view, and now you'll be able to visualize your 3D Atos mesh with color. Now it's important to note that there's no limit of size of what you can and can't add color to. As long as we have the 3D mesh, 2D images, and the Atos software, we'll be able to complete that. Here we demonstrated how to do this on a small art sculpture, but I'll now show you how we can do this on a full-size car. So, once again, inside the Atos software, we have our 3D mesh of a 1976 Ford Bronco, as well as our 2D image of the Bronco. Now, although we're working with a larger scale part, the process is going to be the same. We start with operations, mesh, color mesh from images, and orient other image. From here, we go through the process of selecting five points that are in common between the 2D image and our 3D mesh. And once we've selected our fifth and final point, we'll be given a preview of our image overlapping our mesh. We will then select OK. Now that we have our image overlapping our mesh, we're ready to project our image onto our mesh. We do this again by going to Operations, Mesh, Color Mesh from Images, and Camera Image Contents on Mesh. You will be given the option to input a custom name and then select your mesh of interest. Once complete, you will have your mesh with color and we will click Create and Close. From here, we can now drag and drop our color mesh to show that element exclusively, and you'll now be able to visualize your 3D Atos mesh with color. Another way we can visualize color within the GOM software is the ability to change your mesh color. Here, we can see a digital representation of an Xbox controller. If we take a look at our Explorer tab, we can see all the different meshes that make up this data set. Now, at its current state, it's a little difficult for us to differ between the different parts that make up this part. We can make this easier, though, by changing our mesh color. We do this by selecting our mesh of interest, and then we must open the Properties tab. There's two ways you can open the Properties tab. One way is by clicking the double arrows on the right-hand side of your screen, or by simply clicking the Hotkey tab. Once inside the Properties tab, you're going to want to go down to the display bar and find surface. Under surface you'll find the front side and a dialog box with a variety of colors to select from. From here you're going to select the color you wish to add and you'll see that only that mesh that you selected will be changed. Now it's up to you to decide which color you'd like to make your mesh. Now that we've changed our mesh color, you can much easier visualize the different components that make up an Xbox controller. So that concludes all the steps needed to perform an image map on your mesh. It's a pretty unique tool that can enhance the user's ability to visualize and map real life photos onto the scan data. A few simple steps of importing a photo and selecting points and you're able to see color details mapped onto your mesh. If you're looking for more information on how to perform a digital assembly or what a digital assembly is, then please click here to take you to my fellow colleague discussing digital assembly. I hope you enjoyed this video and now you have the knowledge to try this on your own. Don't forget to please click the subscribe button below to make sure you're notified of new content and tutorials from Capture3D. Also, visit our website for case studies or to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with our team. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.